Chief of Police also uh, is in charge of emergency management, which is our next line item. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he's, Christy, do you have any presentation on this you're gonna make? <laughs> okay, uh, so I will make it. The Chief is going to be delighted in explaining to us why this budget is up over a thousand percent. Well, because the budget had forever, since I've been in this department, has been a thousand dollars. Um, which, if you look around, and I mean, I'd love to point to a couple of places and say we should be doing it this way, but when you look around us, it's kind of all over the map. So, a lot of the money when we do, uh, you know, we participate in the Seabrook drills, and those are coming up next year. Uh, we've had a number of these uh, weather issues where we invoke our emergency management team, even though there's not a declared emergency. It just seems uh, similar to when we had the. Uh, the outbreak down at the beach this summer that we put that under the roof of emergency management even though classically that's a health officer issue because of the multi-jurisdictional response that seemed a natural place so we wind up spending money that winds up coming out of department budgets as opposed to trying to get a handle on that unified system of emergency management so I ask that we take the money that we receive uh, quarterly from uh, the state for our participation just add that number up and give that to us at least as a starting point as a budget. Okay. To me, I think we need to build on that a little bit, but it's at least a starting point. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions? I have a discussion. Mr. Ladd. Do we have a designated evacuation center for the town? Yes, we do. Okay. In the, for the radiological plan? Uh, for either flooding or the radiological For the radiological plan, that's a state plan, there is a, an evacuation site that we go to. It's Dover, New Hampshire. Dover, it's up to Dover. Yeah. Do we have anything in town for flooding or other issues? We don't know. We are not. Uh, there is no shelter designated by Homeland Security in the town of Hampton. What we routinely do is we open up the, the police station training room as a warming station. A lot of these storms are very intense at the beginning, but then dissipate pretty quickly. The longest I think we've ever had anybody stay in our building was about 12 hours before mm -hmm. we could get them into their homes, get heat going, or get them someplace else with a family member. Um, opening up a shelter is a very daunting task. I know a lot of people in the past have think, you know, been very forthright and demanding that we should do it. And only because I've been doing it for this long and seeing what we deal with, I don't think it would be a good idea or a good expenditure of money simply because if we get into a situation where we need to open up a, a center, we need to get these people away from here so we can focus on dealing with the issues down here. We need to get them to a place where they can get medical attention, where they can deal with if they have pets with them, and deal with those issues that if we're all dealing with a flood or some, uh, some major catastrophe in town, we don't have any assets left to man that. And that's the key thing. You've got to have assets to man your evacuation centers. Where would that be under the current reality? Where would these people go for that help? If we had to evacuate an area yeah. for a storm, yeah. I would contact um, my counterparts in New Hampshire Homeland Security Emergency Management, let them know that I had this many people that I need to find housing for for the foreseeable, for the next 48 hours. Mm -hmm. They would designate a site for me, either a National Guard shelter or they may utilize the, I like the radiological plan. I know some people don't like that plan, but it's a good basic footprint for us down here on the seacoast that if we have to evacuate areas and utilize assets from the state, because we practice so much with them, there's relationships built that we can get things done fairly quickly mm -hmm. uh, to respond to those things. But in the event we use something in Hampton, we have an agreement with SAU 90, uh, with the superintendent, uh, that I believe all of their schools now have generators and cafeterias, that we will be able to house people and feed them for a short period. It's the manning over a length of time that becomes problematic. So you have an uh, academy in particular in mind? Uh, well, they're in transition right now. I mean, so once the construction is complete. Once it's complete, yeah, because they'd have a big enough facility, right. being the gymnasiums, where if we had to bring in the National Guard and bring in cars, we'd have a place to set those up. Yeah. Right. Any other questions, and, Mr. Ladd? And you purchased a couple of high water military use surplus vehicles? No, we haven't purchased anything. It's a it's a decommissioning program that the military has for law enforcement, and, it, and it's anything the military has in its range that you can art articulate that you could use in your law enforcement mission you can put in a bid for it. So right now we have one truck that we've accepted. There's some mechanical issues we're having worked on it, but it's, an, it's got low mileage. And it's more an issue of these things sit in depots sometimes for years. 
And, if, and I'm not a mechanic, I'm not a wrench, but those guys will tell you that's probably one of the worst things for the vehicle for things like brakes and transmissions. Mm -hmm. So we're working through those problems on this truck, yeah. but I'm, I'm hopeful to have that uh, in our inventory here pretty quickly so that if we have to get firefighters down into those areas with the boat and all that, we have a vehicle and we're not sending in a night, a vehicle that's designed for harsh terrain. Yeah. A fire engine isn't designed to go into water. These how, are. I look forward to that being in our fixed access program as well. Uh, how many trucks? <laughs> Whatever you want, Tim. <laughs> how many trucks would be appropriate to meet the, uh, uh, the need? <coughs> well, I would, in the end, like to get three to four, and here's why. They always, the people that have used this program for years, you always want to have, want to have as a spare to get parts so you're not waiting on parts from DOD because you can wait months. If you have one that maybe isn't in the best shape but it, it's serviceable, you use it when you have to, but you can also start taking it apart if you needed parts for the others. Yeah. Any other, Mr. LeBranch? <clears throat> Just want to point out that uh, <coughs> that when you made the um, well, when you talked about this to the board of uh, selectmen, that basically the twelve thousand four hundred and sixty-four dollars is a wash because you're yeah. three and five. The money comes back. So uh, it's, it's a wash. It's in here. That you have to have it in there for the budget, but. Basically, it's a Thank you, Ms. LeBranch. Any other questions or comments on emergency management? Uh, I have one final question. We have discussed in the past <coughs> an emergency management committee. In my senses, you think we may end up going there, but we're not at the point where we yet need to go there? I think what we have to define is by statute, you have to have an emergency management director. Okay? It's not a committee. It's up to an individual town as to what they, you know, you look around us and different towns use it in different fashions. Seabrook uses it extensively for a variety of things. I don't think we would go that route here. I think really what we need to focus, the area I wish we could focus on, uh, but I just don't have the time, is the flood issues. Because we're having people coming in on a consistent basis dealing with repetitive flood damage. Now, there's a series of different grants, but you really need somebody that can sit down and really look at those because some of them are, you know, one of them is basically your house has had repetitive damage. They used it up, I believe, in Allenstown when they had the floods up there. It's a retreat program. We're going to buy your house at market value. It's going to be deeded. It can be never built on again. The house will be torn down and we're done with the problem. We'll walk away. That's one program. The other programs tend to be either the owner of the property that's had the damage or the community has to have a fund to pay the costs up front and then you have to submit for reimbursement. I would not be in favor of that program because there's no guarantee you're going to get reimbursed and now the town is on the hook Let's say we have to pay $60,000 to raise a house down on Island Path and that it could be that expensive to raise it up into those areas where, where you're not having the, the repetitive damage. And all of a sudden, for some reason, the federal government of FEMA decides we're changing the rules by a paragraph and you're no longer eligible to get that money. That's not a path I would think that the, the taxpayers would want to go down. Um, but we need somebody that, that can be very versed in those things. Now, uh, conservation is doing a great job. Ray Ann's been helping with that. But I think as part of emergency management, having a committee of people that take that particular thing on and can give the director advice give the town manager advice on those issues because the dealing with FEMA, we're, we're dealing with it now, is it's is daunting. Any other questions just seems on the budget? A, a lot of, well, this is, a lot of people in the community would be able to help you if you had a mechanism to allow them. Yep, I agree. There's, yeah. there's a lot of skilled people that I'm aware of that have had backgrounds that yeah. would be very suitable to, to assist us in that mission. I just think it's unreasonable that you be, expect Ex be expected to be the FEMA representative, the health representative, the evacuation representative. The well, we break those things. Board. We have a great team, we, and we and, yeah. uh, and that's why we do the drills, and I and I get people to get involved in them because I can't do it all. You're correct. We delegate between uh, Chief Ayotte and I. We have a pretty good team, including the building inspector, public works, does the transportation for us. So. It's just daunting to get it together and coordinate. And that's truly what an emergency management director does. We're a coordinator. When it gets beyond our ability to handle a problem, somebody's got to coordinate that efforts with state and federal authorities to come in and, and, and what's the proper thing to do. That's truly the role. Um, but we can expand on it. There's nothing that says we can't use it for more things. Any other questions on the budget of the emergency management? Thank you. On to